Now we're going to talk about holding the instrument and how to actually balance it rather than grabbing the instrument. This is one of the key uh, areas where many beginners are confused, where many beginners tend to have all kinds of problems in their playing. One of the most typical ways of approaching this for many beginners is, for example, when they see the instrument coming up this way, they might oftentimes jut out their head and neck this way. And then, to add to that, they'll bring up the shoulder in such a way as to create like a vice. So this thing isn't going anywhere because I'm gripping onto it for dear life with my shoulder and head. Notice when I take away the instrument, what I've created here, this is no way to go through life. After doing this for just a short amount of time, it starts to feel extremely uncomfortable. I'd much rather hold my body as I would if I weren't even playing. And I'll show you how it's possible to do that with, uh, with the minimum of uh, overexerting in any way, shape, or form. So when we're talking about balance, what we're also talking about is the fact that we do not want this instrument to fall down. Because of gravity, if we put it on a slope, it's eventually going to fall down if I do nothing about it. So the question is how to counter that. Many players typically will hunch their shoulders forward, for example, and notice how this creates the very slope that we don't want. And because it creates that slope, we then counter it by doing this with our head and neck. This is not good. Now, let's start again. And this time, we'll allow our shoulders to simply relax back where they'd be if we weren't even trying to play a violin or viola. So the question is then, how do we create this balance? The answer lies really in understanding the skeleton as well as the shoulders. If you were to look at a skeleton, and you can look one up easily on uh, the internet, you'll see the rib cage, and you notice how the shoulders simply rest atop that rib cage. Again, thanks to gravity, there's no need to be holding ourselves up by doing this. Right? Typically, we'll see people who may be stressed and so forth walking around this way, but we know that they're stressed. So we'd much rather keep our shoulders where they are without having to exaggerate in any way, shape, or form. So this next part is slightly more complex, and that has to do with what muscles we're using to support ourselves. So if it's not the shoulders and it's not the head gripping for dear life, what could it be? The answer lies in uh, those many sit-ups that you do, or if you're into Pilates and so forth. But the bottom line is we learn how to really strengthen these mu muscles under the rib cage. Most string players tend to completely ignore those muscles, but look what happens when we're not using them. They tend to perpetuate sloping, which can be um, exaggerated fully. But notice how when we use those muscles, not only under the rib cage, but the muscles that go all the way up around the vertebra, we can feel ourselves being held up by our rib cage without having to do this with our shoulders. Once we're able to do this and hold ourselves up where our, uh, our shoulders, our, um, our chest is able to open out properly and comfortably, from there, we then create a nice little place where the violin can, or viola can easily rest. You can almost imagine that there's a string coming up like this, enabling you to open out the um, chest and rib cage without having to do anything unusual with the shoulders. Once we have this simple posture going for us, then all we have to do is drop the instrument onto our body, noting where it feels most comfortable, noticing where it's able to just rest without tending to want to fall. Here's an important place where we can discover whether we have a trajectory that is optimal for our body. For the very beginner, it may take a little time to discover where that place is so that the instrument doesn't tend to fall. Or on the other hand, you might try to put it over on the shoulder like this but then notice what happens. You then have to bring over the head and the neck and the whole contraption. So you've thrown yourself completely off balance. So again, to recap, finding that place where we're able to support our torso, 
allowing our rib cage to open out and keeping our shoulders relaxed and down and then being able to bring up the instrument, letting it rest and allowing our rib cage and our, and our back to support us. In doing so, our head can rest, it doesn't have to grip, and we can enjoy ourselves.